Welcome to today's video. I'm really excited to share something special with you today. And that is a workflow that enables the use of agentic systems in the low code platform Lime. If you've been following the recent developments around large language models, you may have come across the term of AI agents already. Whether it is the NVIDIA CEO talking about his expectations around how AI agents will impact the workforce, or Microsoft releasing agentic frameworks into their co-pilot, or the Salesforce CEO dissing Microsoft because he thinks his agents are better. There has been a lot of buzz around this topic. I've personally played around with different agentic systems like Crew AI and Langgraph since early in 2024, and I already made videos about how they can be used within NIME. I've been toying with the idea for a while to potentially implement one of these frameworks as an extension into NIME. But as I got to know NIME's functionality better, I came to the conclusion that all the ingredients necessary to build an AI agent or potentially a swarm or system of AI agents are already available natively in NIME. And that is why over the past couple of weeks, I decided to see if I can get a little prototype working. That's exactly what I want to share with you today. Although I will not dive deep into any of the details like the workflows behind what I've built, I want to start with a brief introduction so that everyone's on the same page as to what AI agents are and how they work. And after that, I will share a bit about the concepts that I've implemented thus far. On the more practical side, I've prepared two experimental use cases where I created agent systems that work on specific tasks and processes. And I will share two of them with you in the course of this video. And so you may now wonder what actually is an AI agent and how does it work? So one individual AI agent you can see as a program. And the brain behind this program is a large language model like GPT-4, Claude 3.5 Sonnet, or any other LLM. Each agent will have a specific system prompt and a specific user prompt that is optimized to fulfill a certain task. However, these prompts are not static, but they typically have placeholders in them that get replaced with specific user input. Let's say you have a search agent as an example. You don't want to hard code a specific question you prompt. Let's say I want to find out who the favorites for the Ironman World Championships 2024 are. I don't write exactly that question into the prompt, but I want my agent to be able to answer any question. That's why I may have a placeholder in the user prompt called user question that can be replaced with any question that a user may ask. Natively, an agent is limited to the knowledge that it was trained on. And most model providers these days share their knowledge cutoff dates. Typically, in the best case, it's just six months into the past. They wouldn't have any knowledge of. In order to overcome that limitation, agents can be provided with tools that allow them to interact with different other systems. For example, a handy tool for a search agent would be a Google search tool combined with a web scraping tool that would allow the agent to access the internet, perform a Google search, browse to the top two links and extract the text on that website to use that then to answer a user question. A tool can also be seen as a program. It receives an input and turns that input based on certain logic into an output. For any AI agent to use a tool, they need to know what the purpose of the tool is, what inputs it needs and what outputs it generates. These things are defined in what is called a schema. And that, where, that is where it becomes very important that large language models have become increasingly good at producing structured outputs. You may have heard about things like function calling or JSON mode or structured outputs. And in this context, on a very simplistic level, you can use these terms interchangeably. So in a nutshell, an AI agent is a large language model powered program that has a task specific system prompt and a user prompt and can have access to different tools to help it fulfill its task. Let's now take it a step further and talk about what it takes to make multiple agents work together 
or work in a sequence. A setup like that can be referred to as an agentic system that defines different agents with different tools to perform a sequence of tasks. Let's take a story writing process as an example. You may break that down into brainstorming the plot based on the plot defining the world and based on the world to define the different characters. And based on all of these inputs to then start writing the story up separate into different chapters. You can now create specific prompts for agents that take on these different tasks. For example, you could have a plot architect agent with a prompt that is optimized to define a plot based on user input. Using this plot as input, a world builder agent describes the world that the story takes place in. Both these inputs are used by a character creator agent, which outlines the different characters and how they evolve throughout the story. And finally, a story writer agent takes all of the previous agent's outputs to write up the full story and to divide it up in different chapters. In order for this to work, there are some additional things that are required. For example, the different agents need to have a shared knowledge. This is typically referred to as a state. They will also need to know which agents exist in the system, which tasks they can take on, which inputs they need, and what outputs they produce, as well as the sequence they have to act in. One way this is implemented is to have one agent that is sort of a project manager, which receives all this knowledge about the other agents and their specializations and knowledge about the process that is supposed to follow and the sequence that the agent should act in. And this project manager then orchestrates the different agents so in a nutshell, an agentic system contains multiple agents that use task specific prompts and tools to fulfill a role in a larger process. The agents have access to shared knowledge, which is referred to as a state. And there's one agent that has specific information about the full process and orchestrates the different specialist agents. So this is now the perfect time to start the very first demonstration of having an agentic system run in line. You may have noticed that I put quite a bit of effort and detail into explaining the different agents and roles that they could take in writing a story. And the reason behind that is that I actually tried to build this in Nime for my first, very first prototype. And it was quite successful. So let's take a quick look at some more details around these agents. So on screen, we can now see the different large language models that are powering these agents. So for plot architect, world builder and character master, I actually was able to use a locally hosted large language model when 2.5, 7 billion parameter. And then only for the chapter writer, I decided to use the OpenAI API with GPT-40 mini, which is a very cheap alternative. And only for the agent orchestrator, I used the more powerful and slightly more expensive model GPT-40, which is one of the state of the art models. So the task that was given to these agents were three user inputs. So the user idea was a story, a fast paced adventure involving three different characters with unique abilities that randomly meet up under extreme circumstances. The genre is sci-fi and fantasy, and it's three chapters that should be written. Let's see how our agent system does. So what you can see on screen right now is the chat data app that I've built. So you can see the conversations that the agents have in chat bubbles in green and yellow. There are two modes. Whilst the show full message history box in the top corner is not checked, we will see a high level summary where the different agents are reporting back to the agent orchestrator and the agent orchestrator is telling us who is picked next. Once I check that box, as you can see, there's a more detailed view, which is the raw output that the agents deliver. So over the course of the section, I'll swap in and out this um, updates once per full run. So the way it works is first the agent orchestrator is making a decision. 
is sending a request to one of the agents and the agent responds back to the agent orchestrator and then this chat is updated. I leave a timer running. So this overall took just over 10 minutes to run and I will speed it up here and there because um, as I told you, I'm running some local large language models and the inference there just takes some time. Here you can see now that the plot architect has just finished his job with quite comprehensive output. He split the plot ac across a couple of acts. And now it will take some time until the agent orchestrator makes his next pick. So he's now picked the world builder. Here we can see the user prompt to the agent orchestrator. So you can see that the plot architect already acted. That's a piece of information that gets injected into one of these placeholders that I've been talking about. So now the world builder has finished. So the world builder has written a lot of input about key locations and society. And we can also see in the chat bubble the output from the plot architect that was injected into the user prompt of the world builder. Now it's a character master's turn. The next round has finished. And if we refresh, we can see the character master has defined three characters. And also the relations between the characters and the development. And as expected, the agent orchestrator has picked the chapter writer as the next agent. Chapter writer has reported back that he's done with the first chapter. And now it's up to the agent orchestrator to realize that there are three chapters to be written. So the, he has to task the chapter writer once again. And in the chapter writer prompt, you can see all the previous inputs from the other agents. And once the chapter writer gets to act again, we'll also see that one of the inputs is the full last chapter that the chapter writer has delivered. Second reporting back by the chapter writer complete. So it's chapter two that was completed now. And on the left side, you see the chapter writer prompt. Characters. And there is the instruction that one of three chapters is complete. And then also the full first chapter. And based on all of that, it then wrote the second chapter. So now the chapter writer reports back a third time. And now there's actually one agent that didn't really work that well that I've chained at the end, which I haven't talked about yet. That is the formatter agent. And this is now the real test for the agent orchestrator to realize that three chapters have been written and that now the story formatter has to act, which the story formatter does. So for this agent, I also picked a local large language model. And I think that was just too weak or maybe the context window was too small for all the three chapters. Um, this one won't do a really good job in formatting the all the three chapters. I think it just repeats a piece of it. We will see in a moment. And that's where this workflow then wraps up. So the story formatter has reported back, as I said, full disclosure, the output was not as expected for this one, but hey, for the next one, I might use a more powerful large language model or maybe tweak the prompt a little bit 
and I'm sure that will work out then as well. Next, I want to walk you through at least the high level, let's call it architecture that I've created in NIME to make this work. So overall, this is a data app. And if we zoom into that component, there are obviously fields for the different user inputs that are required in the example that I've just shown you that the user idea for the story, the desired genre, and also the number of chapters that are supposed to be written by the agentic AI system. And then in this inside this component, like one level down, there is a loop. And inside that loop is another component, which is the generic agent. And in this first component lives the agent orchestrator. So every iteration of this loop starts with the agent orchestrator assessing the current status of the process and based on that deciding how to route the project and who to ask to act next. So which agent has to act next. And after that is another agent. And this agent gets dynamically injected with the prompt. And that is always dependent on the choice of the agent orchestrator. So once then the specific agent, let's call him or her, has acted, we have the loop end and the process starts over again. So the way that I've made sure that we don't have an infinite loop is in my inputs, I can define the last agent to act. And whenever the agent orchestrator picks this agent that was flagged as the last one to act, then the loop will exit and stop after that last agent has reported back that the task is complete. So that's the overall setup. After this successful iteration with the storyteller workflow, I decided to elevate the game by implementing tool calling. So giving agents tools. So for that, I had to tweak the agent component and sort of think about what a tool component looks like and how to standardize that. And I used the other use case that I described at the beginning, this search agent as an example for that. So how about we check out how the search agent did. It's a bit of a quicker recording. And for this, I only used the Quen 2.5 7 billion parameters model. So I was able to run that entirely locally. But it's also that the number of agents and the number of iterations for the search task are much less. All right, I'm a little bit under the weather as of the time of this recording. So let me just do a bit of a voiceover on what we see on screen, what got drawn up already. So the overall process is that the agent orchestrator in this case actually gets as input a user chat message. So the user can just write whatever. And the task is A, to extract the user question. That's why that is the output. And to then direct to the next agent, which can be the search agent or the response formulator. So the search agent then takes the user question as an input and produces search keywords and passes these search keywords to the search tool. The search tool then opens a Chrome browser using the web interaction extension from NIME, performs a Google search for each of the keywords or key phrases and browses to the top result and extracts the text from that. And this output, which is called search results, is then passed to the response formulator, who is tasked to extract relevant information to the user question from the text extracted from the website, and to then finally produce a well-formatted, concise answer to the user. 
Let's now start the agent. In the chat window, you can immediately see the question that I've asked as a user. And now the agent orchestrator starts to work, first of all, on extracting the question, which in this case isn't too difficult of a task. And then in a little bit, it will direct the search agent to start the search process. The orchestrator is done, and if you look at the gray bubble on the left, it has selected the search agent to act as a next agent. Now you can see how the browser window is opening for a Google search, and now one of the results is being browsed to, and the browser window closes, which means that the search tool has finished. Also in the chat window, you can see that the search agent has reported back. And in the detail, we can also see the output of the search tool in the yellow bubble on the top right. Now the orchestrator has decided to task the response formulator to use the search output to formulate the final response. Now it looks like the response formulator is done and we can see all the favorites, which I actually agree with. I mean, as at the time of the recording, we know that the German Patrick Lange won it and a lot of the other favorites didn't fare too well. But anyways, the search was recorded before the race took place. Okay, let's maybe wrap it up with a forward look into the next stages of development that are planned to take. Definitely a priority is to develop more tools. I want to improve the search tool. It was a bit cumbersome and not super accurate to just do that the low code way, but I'm planning to fix that by potentially developing a node that uses a tool like DuckDuckGo search, which is frequently used with agents to make that more accurate. And other tools I have in mind is an SQL tool and an SQL agent as well as potentially a retrieval augmented generation tool. So where we can use a vector store to search for information in our own data. The other priority for sure is to work with more complex agentic systems. So more agents and more complex processes. And I'll definitely do another video on the status of development in the future. And I also then plan to share a little bit more about what is going on under the hood, what the different components look like and how to build an agentic system. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.